Hey guys, welcome back to the Migo YouTube channel. So it's a bit of an old chestnut, it's a bit of one that has, has gone across the internet, is argued by growers day in, day out, and for years and years now, is which is better to grow with HPS or LED? And what are the reasons why experienced growers have um, different experiences depending on whether they, their preference is for LED or HPS? What might those reasons be for? and what can we learn from them. My own experience, I have a background, I started growing in the early 2000s um, with HPS, as everybody did then, there was no choice, so I used the classic metal halide and um, HPS combination, metal halide for vegging, more short and dense growth, HPS then for flowering because it had more uh, power, more power output. But uh, about nearly 10 years ago now, I started experimenting with LED, like many people initially found it to be use, useless and very disappointing. But it's what drove me to, uh, to start the business in terms of my goal was to try and understand how could I get good performance out of LED. Early days it was with DIY, but then started producing lights myself. Since I switched over, I haven't looked back myself, um, but I know lots of people have and have mixed experience with both HPS and LED. And I just want to explore it in this video. I don't want to argue, um, I want to look at it as a positive contribution um, that what we can learn maybe from, from looking at what differences there are, if any, and um, if we are experiencing difficulty in either switching from one to the other, um, what might those reasons be? Because what are the fund fundamental differences in the two technologies? I've seen lots of experienced growers uh, commercial growers uh, insisting and persisting with that HPS is, is, is better and continuing to use them or switching back even. Um, and I've seen LED grow light be developed in the last year or so, particularly where they offer a HPS spectrum. So all those things are going to go into the pot. I'm going to look at what, uh, as I said, what learnings we can get from looking at the objective analysis, the scientific analysis of the performance of each of them. First of all, why did anybody move to LED in the first place? Well, it was really about efficiency. Um, HPS uh, were always very e efficient in terms of outputting photons per watt. And in fact, in the early days of LEDs coming out, LEDs were not as efficient as those HPS. So I know a lot of HPS growers went over and got burnt because they used LEDs in the early days, uh, it wasn't getting a, as good a, a result, and that's not surprising. Those early LEDs were, were just not as efficient as the HPSs they were supposed to replace. And also a lot of the early ones were blurple lights, not the most pleasant to use. So in the last five or six years then, there's been a development of LED technology, and LED now is clearly um, much more efficient than HPS. Um, at least 50% more efficient than HPS. And when you put it into systems, it can be even twice as efficient these days. Um, so even those are higher price for purchasing that LED upfront, that price has dropped significantly. It's, it's um, half the price to buy an LED um, grow light per watt as it was maybe five years ago. And the return on investment, that initial extra for the LED grow light is paid back in a year at sort of um, very regular electricity prices. So, you know, that's, it's not an argument anymore that, uh, you know, LEDs are clearly better in terms of delivering more photons of light per watt consumed. That's better yeah, it's, and then it's indisputable and measurable. Um, but what about spectrum? So what LED does is it delivers within that, that power spectrum. Um, and that's what we measure generally, and that's from 400 to 700 nanometers. And that's got the blue, green, and red. And if you look at the spectrum charts, which I have here, you'll see that there is actually not a huge difference in the range um, of photons that are delivered in terms of wavelength by HPS and LED. But both LED and HPS start to emit photons down in the UVA region about 464, sorry, 360, 370 nanometers. And uh, this is just with regular white LEDs now. Uh, so just a little bit of UVA, about 0.14%, uh, I think I measured in the, in the in recent test. 
Um, HPS doesn't deliver a huge amount either, about 0.2%. And that's, so they're very similar in terms of their UVA output. Then the HPS delivers a relatively small amount of blue, quite a lot of yellow and green and red. Uh, LEDs, depending on the colour temperature, um, will deliver at least 7 or 8% blue. Um, and then the balance in uh, green and red, uh, about um, equally. Then you can add these 660 nanometer reds, sort of boost the efficiency of the, um, the LED spectrum. Um, big difference there in the, within the power spectrum is LED has more blue, and that means you can use it right through the, um, the growth cycle because that amount of blue, at least 7 or 8%, will ensure that you get short dense growth right through the, the growth cycle. So you don't need to switch from metal halide. I don't have a you don't have to have a specific LED grow light or tunable spectrum for the veg and the flowering stage. You can use the same one. So that's an advantage of LEDs. You don't need two bulbs. Then we get to the other end of the spectrum above 700 nanometers and there's what's called far red first. That's between about 700 and 750 nanometers. That is photosynthetic. Plants respond to it. Um, it can cause stretching if you have quite a lot of it. Um, but if you look again at LEDs and HPS, there's a very similar amount of far red in both um, a regular white LED, that's with no added far red LEDs, and a HPS bulb. So they're almost comparable, very similar amount. Now you do get uh, more UVA and um, far red in metal halide and CMH bulbs, but in this case we're focusing really on the LED versus HPS because that's where most people are. So the argument that HPS has a spectrum that um, LEDs don't have or emits photons that LEDs don't have is, is not correct. Um, plants don't know what light is above them, they don't know where the photons are coming from. A photon you know, a 736 nanometer photon from a UV, or sorry, from a, a LED source, the plant is going to perceive exactly the same as if it's from a, if it's from a HPS source. It doesn't know. The other thing with HPS is it also emits uh, infrared or heat. So you go above 750 50 nanometers, and plants aren't. We don't see that light or that radiation. Plants don't use it to grow. Um, but it is heat and it will increase the temperature, particularly of the top of the canopy in your, um, in your HPS grow. And that is not always a good thing. I looked at studies um, and these are uh, controlled studies. Everything else is equal in terms of canopy, canopy temperature. And really you don't want a high temperature, particularly on the, bu the buds and flowers, particularly in later stages of, of uh, growing before harvest because your secondary metabolites, your cannabinoids, your terpenes, they're more likely to evaporate. They'll evaporate at a higher rate and therefore the potency will be lower if the buds are at higher temperature close to harvest. So that is a negative against HPS and an argument why you wouldn't get a better harvest from HPS. So overall in terms of power output, LEDs, you know, deliver a higher output per watt. In terms of spectrum, um, HPS has a very small amount of, uh, a greater amount of UVA and far red, but it's not significant. And with LED grow lights, if you wanted to replicate that, you just add UVA and far red LEDs. So you can replicate that spectrum exactly if you want um, with LED grow lights and have a high efficiency as well. In preparation for doing this video, I put out a few posts on Instagram and YouTube over the last couple of weeks asking for um, HPS and LED growers to send to me and recommend me any evidence they have um, or uh, can find related to studies or tests done of uh, people growing in a controlled way um, under HPS and LED. I got a lot of responses. So thank you very much for that. Got a lot of links to uh, scientific papers and studies where uh, you know universities have studied uh, growing cannabis in controlled environments where they're able to 
you know, keep the, the light intensity, um, use the same cultivar, same genetics, um, same medium, same environmental controls, and um, just vary the light source. And there are numerous, I in fact found, well, found more than five, but I found five that um, were uh, testing this very thing. And uh, extensive tests as well, so using multiple cultivars, uh, multiple samples, uh, and sometimes doing the experiment over and again two or three times to, to prove uh, repeatability. And um, yeah, it's very interesting. All of the studies that I looked at, in uh, nearly all cases, showed that um, cannabis grown under LEDs, now this is just regular LEDs without additional far red or UVA uh, LEDs in them. So basically white LEDs with 660 nanometer reds added compared to HPS spectrum. And in, as I said, in, in nearly all of those cases, the potency, so the percentage of cannabinoids in the harvest was the same or better with LEDs. When I asked around, Lots of HPS growers saying that they have this, um, you know, give me anecdotal evidence that their experience is that they have grown better under HPS than LED. And I take that to be true, I'm not arguing with that. Um, but it is likely that there were other factors involved um, other than the choice of grow light or the source of the photons that you're using to grow plants. Because <clears throat> I've been sent, and I've asked thousands of people, I got hundreds and hundreds of responses from people very passionate on either side, whether they're supporting um, or their preference is for HPS or AD, and I've seen zero evidence to date. That's notwithstanding the fact that um, there's lots of experienced commercial growers out there will say that they prefer to use HPS. And that's, um, you know, that's fair enough. They may see, um, it may be the way that they have worked over the years, um, that their system of setup and turn up environmental controls, etc., cetera, is, is, is better optimized for HPS, so they, they're better experienced with it. Um, but as far as I can see, there is no fundamental reason why that should be the case. And the last sort of, I suppose, uh, leg on the stool of the argument that um, HPS is better than LED is that the sort of theory that makes logical sense, it's sort of intuitive, is that um, lots of cultivars were developed um, under HPS lights. So people selected and bred for performance under the spectrum of HPS. And, um, you know, that, that's obviously true. That has been the case for many, many years. Um, not for the last probably seven or eight years, in which case I could make the equal and opposite argument that more recent cultivars have been selected and chosen under LED, so you're better to grow under LED. But also the case that you can simply just, if that is the case and you believe that to be the case, um, you know, you can grow with an LED grow light. Um, temperature may be an issue for you. It may be um, that you need to replicate in some way the environment that you're um, producing with uh, HPS as opposed to LED. But um, the theory, as far as I can determine, is that you should be able to grow any cultivar as well under LEDs as HPS. I'm not saying that it will happen, um, or there isn't an argument against it out there somewhere, but I haven't seen it yet. Nobody's provided it. Um, I do follow the We The Growers podcast and them at, at athena.ag on um, uh, Instagram. And they are doing multi-room tests at the moment, testing this very hypothesis about LED and HPS. I'm really looking forward to see their results. But as of today, I've seen nothing arguing the, um, I've seen no evidence that HP, we grown, grown under HPS, all other things being equal, will be more potent than if grown under LED. No evidence, zero, nobody has come forward with anything other than their own, as I said, 
uh, anecdotal personal experience. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> am I going to change anybody's mind. People seem to be fairly entrenched, um, particularly uh, from their HPS experience, and not um, really willing to accept uh, arguments against it because they've had this, these experiences and they're embedded in them and they're hard learned. And I do understand that. Um, but my own lived experience is I switched from HPS to LED and. You know, so lots of improvements in terms of uh, the experience with growing. So it's a lot easier for one. Um, you know, less heat radiated heat uh, means the plants are under less stress, um, and therefore you can achieve uh, higher growth rates, um, cheaper, lower cost. And I just found it easier. And it is one of the points to consider is that you know, even on the We the Growers podcast where they're talking about um, uh, you know HPS them preferring HPS over LED in a lot of circumstances what they all say is is you know really in terms of potency it's creating a stress on the plant which helps to improve the production you know the defense mechanism in the plants produce enough secondary metabolites um, sunscreen effect all that stuff but they talk about various means of achieving that um, I have a suspicion that a HPS may be performing that function for them um, in the later stages, but in any case, there's lots of other ways to achieve that. Um, you know, you can use it with irrigation, uh, with pruning, even um, with environment control, so restriction on CO2, or um, or you can do it with light. And you know, our or sorry, my advice or our advice here at MyGrow is to do that using UVB. Um, UVB cannot be emitted by a HPS bulb. There's one here. It's got a glass casing on it, and that glass does not allow um, wavelengths basically under about 350 nanometers, so down in the, the lower UVA and UVB range to, um, to uh, pass. That's why we don't get a sunburn you know, behind the car window or, or through a, a window or a house. Um, and as I said, if you're looking for that stress from UVB, um, you can add a, a separate UVB grow light. Um, and again, I found fluorescence to be the best source of that. You don't need very much, you know, 20 watt fixture in a 5x5 five five will, um, will produce enough stress on the plants to uh, trigger that response. So where your LEDs are great for, you know, good, consistent environment control, all that stuff, basically low stress on the plants allows a higher growth rate in order to... Um, shake them up a little bit and trigger that response, you may need to use other factors. Not flushing, by the way, <laughs> it does not work. Please don't do it, it's a waste of time. Uh, it can damage the plant, if anything, so it's not the stress you should do. But uh, yeah, said a lot, hope it makes sense, hope it doesn't agitate people further and maybe enlightens a little bit or makes people question maybe some of the preconceptions that they have and uh, adds to uh, adds to our general knowledge, not um, entrenches us further. So that's the hope. Let's see what happens. Looking forward to your comments below. And uh, yeah, take care.